welcome to another round of my little Git Animal series. Today is a glorious day in May in Germany in spring. Uh, yeah, look here. Uh, yeah, what I'm doing here, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not outside, but I have a good reason for that. Because today um, I want to do a amplifier demo and um, yeah, this amplifier has some history. Uh, let me explain this short. Um, it's a uh, 1971 MPEG VD40, uh, yeah, 50 watts tube combo with 4 times 10 speakers. And I think it was in oh, 1982-1983 when um, I already had this amplifier for one or two years. I was a young boy, like 17 years old. And uh, yeah, I was dumb enough to sell off this amplifier for 300 bucks. <laughs> I slapped myself for that. It was, yeah, uh, it was a sin in my youth time. And uh, the reason was I wanted to have a Marshall, you know, there was this Marshall um, uh, solid state hype back then. And you had a master volume and at home you can play distorted and you, you could turn down the master volume. The MPEG VD40 had no master volume and it was very loud until it started to crunch. So I thought I'm, I'm clever, but later I regretted it ever since. And um, yeah, it was uh, like uh, 30 years later when, I, when, when the pain returned, you know, and um, this MPEG VD40s are very rare, at least here in Germany. Uh, very rare to find especially this model because it's the the first model of the vd40 i think they produced it from 1969 until somewhere in 72 i'm not so sure about that then the model changed for example uh, my mpeg has uh, some crazy tubes uh, inside um, you find there a 6 cg7 uh, you can see here in the detail this is also used in uh, some Fender amplifiers, uh, so you, you can find these tubes today. And there's another crazy tube in this amplifier. As you can see here in the detail, it's called a 6K11. Um, this is for the mid-range EQ, and uh, in the later models of this VD40, they, they didn't use uh, this uh, tube. They replaced this um, with another circuit and used other tubes. Anyway, more than 30 years after I sold off my VD40, and the pain started to come back every day, um, a friend called me and said he saw in the local newspaper paper in his hometown, which is 400 kilometers from my town, Frankfurt, in the middle of Germany, and so he is living in the northern region of Germany. He said he saw an, uh, somebody selling a VD40, uh, doesn't know much about this, has only the telephone number, and uh, gave me the number. I called this number immediately, made a date, drove uh, 400 kilometers, not knowing what, what will happen. I saw this amplifier and I immediately started shaking a little bit, you know, because I, um, I, I um, you know, with every piece of equipment I own, I, I, I mark it. I put my name on it somewhere inside. And yes, it was my amplifier. It was my amplifier I sold off 30, more than 30 years ago. So I paid the dude. I think I paid double for that. It was in a very bad uh, condition. And uh, yeah, <clears throat> that's the reason why I'm doing this uh, demo today, because I figured there are not many uh, VD40s available today from this first production uh, variant. And um, also on YouTube, I, uh, I think I found only four or five demos. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, this amplifier is really something. It has the best um, EQ control of all tube amplifiers I, um, I, I know of. And apart from that, it's very loud. And um, yeah, of course the amp, the other owner just rode it like a dead horse, you know. <laughs> um, all the tubes were bad, uh, capacitors were bad. And um, over time when I, used it again and put some new tubes in uh, other problems occurred and the latest was then that the power transformer gave up 
So I was also a little bit in pain again until I found uh, somebody also uh, over a good friend who told me I know somebody. This guy can do wonders and uh, his name is Bobby. Hi Bobby, if you watch this. <laughs> Bobby is a very special character and uh, a total tube amplifier expert, vintage tube amplifier expert. And um, he's not doing this for everybody nowadays. He's also a little bit older. I brought this amp to him. You can see here my amp lying on his workbench. And he did wonders with it. He, he did everything. He, he checked every capacitor, every resistor, every... Uh, possible uh, uh, malfunction. He recapped it, he put new tubes in, rebiased it, and also uh, helped to uh, make it a little bit, more, little bit more silent because originally the design of the EVD40 uh, yeah, was not the silent one, you know, it was humming anyway and making noises. So now this amp is very silent and it's sounding like a dream. And uh, yeah, this this I want to demo for you. I use a uh, I, I, I just use one guitar for that. I uh, can't do uh, every possible combination. I just do what I think sounds good and sounds nice with this amplifier. And this um, it's a 1986 Gibson Les Paul standard uh, m makes a very good match with this amplifier. In the year 2018, uh, yeah, we can play around with some modern toys. Yeah, like a little bit reverb and a little bit delay and uh, just listen how that uh, microphone um, clean sound of this MPEG VD40 comes over with a little bit reverb and delay. Listen for yourself. This sounds cringe-worthy, isn't it? It's just a wonderful, dynamic and clean sound and the resolution of the strings uh, comes over, so it's a wonderful sound. So, this being said, listen to this 47 years old baby. Uh, and uh, here you have a schematic. It's the schematic which is inside of the amplifier, which was of a huge comfort <laughs> when Bobby tried to repair this thing. And uh, yeah, listen for yourself. I just um, have prepared two playbacks. First, I start with a clean playback to give you some uh, ideas about the clean dynamic behavior, switch pickup selections and turn a little bit on the volume and tone control. And after that, a crunch example. So have fun. <laughs>
hopefully heard, this amp has some wonderful clean tones, isn't it? By the way, I use a stereo miking setup uh, today for this demo, just to bring over more of the speciality of this amplifier. It sounds a bit better with two microphones. Like I mentioned before, this amp has a uh, EQ from hell. Uh, yeah, listen for yourself here, I'll give you just an example how the mid-range and uh, also the treble works. With all these knobs, with the dip switches, they are very, very effective. And uh, yeah, listen for yourself. So you have no problem whatsoever to have a lot of trouble if you're running out of trouble with your guitar. And again, I'm using a Les Paul here. You just <laughs> use the dip switch, turn the treble knob, and you, you got trouble. Same is true with the mid-range, which is so crazy. Uh, it's, it's, it's like a wah-wah pedal. <laughs> it has a great working reverb which was not working at all when I got the amplifier but Bobby the dude who prepared this amp for me um, with uh, surgical precision uh, made it working again listen for yourself <laughs> And uh, like it is with these uh, more interesting tube amplifiers, you know, you play a little bit like that. And then you turn a little bit on the volume knob of your guitar. Turn a little bit more on the wall, you know, of your guitar. And the baby screams. Yeah, next, the crunch example. I'll give you an idea about the distorted sound. And um, yeah, have fun. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yeah. What you don't hear is how loud this amplifier is. I have it in a separate room here. <clears throat> Otherwise, my ears would be bleeding. It's really very loud, but very warm also on the ears. Um, uh, anyway, it's better if it's uh, in the other room. But you also maybe heard there is a certain quality to the distortion of this amplifier, how, how it breaks up and how it compresses the sound. Um, especially with this last stage tubes here used in this amplifier, which are good for 50 watts. They are also a little bit rare, not so typical uh, today. Those are 7027As. And um, yeah, I hope you heard sometimes the guitar starts to sound a little bit like a violin. I, I hope I'm not exaggerating, uh, but it's like that and it feels like that. You just touch the strings and the amp brings it in a compressed form. It's just wonderful. Can, can you tell that I'm very happy that I got my amplifier back after more than 30 years? I think it's 35 years it was away. And um, yeah, I use it also every here and then in my vintage guitar demos because it supports uh, the sound of very fine guitars absolutely well. This being said, I wish you lots of musical inspiration. Hope that you learned a little bit about this really rather rare 1971 vintage MPEG VD40. And uh, yeah, see you next time. Bye bye.